Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Trade Station Masterclass. Um, just a, a little bit of uh, what happened on Friday. We had some technical difficulties and uh, we weren't able to start the session. I was able to start it here on my side, uh, but for some reason, the session did not start on the website. So if you were waiting on Friday afternoon for you know, the Masterclass session, I apologize for that. We were kind of uh, you know, scrambling to make the guest speaker session that we had in the morning, the 11 a.m. session with Garrett Schuler, We were working on that to, to make it happen. And I think something broke our regular scheduled class at 12.30. So uh, we had to cancel it last minute. So glad to see you back. Thank you for being here. My name is Jesus Nava, Director of Client Training and Education for Trade Station. And um, we're gonna talk about Trade Station today. Specifically, talk about one of those features that are kind of um, used, not as much. So I like to talk about these topics once in a while so that we are all aware of what's available instead of trade station and how you can capitalize on that. So the topic for today's presentation is using built-in custom studies. We're going to take a look at a series of studies that are created or built into trade station for you to provide your custom mathematical formula or your own custom uh, technical study calculations so that you can see those values right on the chart. So before we get started, here are some important disclosures. Keep in mind that every symbol and idea that I talk about is for educational purposes only. It is not a recommendation of trade station. Also that active trading is not suitable for everyone and that past historical performance is no guarantee of future results. For additional information on these disclosures, you see a link right here in the PowerPoint slide that will take you to additional details. It is www.tradestation.com forward slash important dash information. All right. Thank you guys for being here. Let's go ahead and jump over to my Trade Station platform and get this class started. So I'm going to go and uh, open up a chart analysis window. Let's see what we can do here. All right, so this is my chart analysis for this is American Express on a five minute time frame. It's not really important what symbol you're looking at or what time frame you're looking at. These custom studies will work on any asset class in any time frame. When I go here to studies and I click on add studies, I'm going to scroll to the word custom because they're listed as custom. So very simple to find right here in the list. And if you look at the word custom right here in the indicator list, you have, a, you have, well, you have four that have a line uh, associated with them, like custom one line, two line, three line, four lines. And then you have a custom quote. We're gonna take a look at the custom quote. I haven't used custom quote in a while or custom quote in inside of a chart analysis, uh, if I can be more specific. So we'll see how that works on the chart. For now, let's look at custom one, two, three, four lines and see uh, what type of application can we, can we use in these uh, studies on, okay? So let's go here to a custom one line, click okay. And if I don't do, if I don't make any edits to the indicator, the way that it comes, I just select it and I just apply to the chart, I'll see a line plotted at the bottom of the chart. Well, what does that line mean? Well, even though it's, a, it's an indicator that is designed for you to supply the, the study, if you don't supply the mathematical formula, the indicator has its own. So it has a default mathematical formula or default calculation. What is it? Uh, you can find out by editing the study. So let me double click on this line. And if you go to the inputs tab, you'll see the mathematical formula in there. Uh, in this particular case, it says the close minus the close, and there's a number 10 inside square brackets. If you're not very familiar with the easy language, this 10 inside square brackets, it's just a historical reference. It's like telling trade station to go back 10 bars and find out what values are in there. In this case, it's looking at the closing price of that bar. So the mathematical formula is very straightforward from that point on where it says, okay, take the closing price of the current bar and subtract the closing price of 10 bars ago. 
And that, of course, is going to give you a value that is going to update in real time. And you can also reference historical values on this mathematical formula. If I look over here, let me expand my chart. You can see that right now, that difference is about a dollar and four cents, a dollar and seven cents. You can see how the value updates in real time. So what we're looking at is the closing price of this candle, which is 181.93, and the closing part of the previous one, which is 181.89. So you can see that it's about a dollar, really? Close 181.89, close 181.93. Well, that may be something interesting. The close here, 181. Just trying to check the math here. You know how I am with math, right? Okay, because all that. <laughs> I was doing something really stupid. I was comparing the closing price of the current bar with the close of the prior bar. And that's not what the formula, that's not what I just said, right? What I just said that is comparing the current close with the closing price of 10 bars ago. So from this bar, which is closing at 181.94, I have to go back 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, right here. And the closing price of this bar is 180.86. So we're talking about a $1 difference between that closing price and the current closing price, which is the value you see reflected right here on the screen. Of course, as I said at the very beginning, uh, you can modify that formula and you can make it your own. In fact, let me go to double click on that line. Now let me just do something very simple like uh, removing this whole mathematical operator. I'm just gonna have the word close in there. I'm gonna click okay. And notice how it changes the line and the value that you see here for the line, the 181.90 is going to match the closing price of the bar, 181.90. You see how those two are updating at the same time. In fact, what I just did by editing the formula and just having the word close is that this line is just plotting close to close. I'm gonna double click on this line again, and I'm gonna to go to the style, not the style, sorry, I'm gonna to go to the scaling because I want this calculation to go right here on the same axis as underlying data. When you go to the scale of a study and you see all these um, options to select, when you see an indicator that takes on its own subgraph at the bottom of the chart, that indicator is using its own you know, scale. So the scale is either on the right or to the left. So you have those two options in here. But you have another option that uses the same axis as underlying data, meaning that if you select this one, the indicator will go right on top of the bars or right on top of the candles because it's using the same scale as the data. I'm gonna choose that one and click OK. And now the visual is there. The visual is exactly what we had described. This is a line that is connecting the closing prices of each one of those candles because that's what we made it do. Does that make sense? Now, if I come over here, let me double click on that line again. Let's edit that custom one line. If I go to the Impost tab, you can continue you know, adding and modifying this. If you've been in some of my easy language classes, you know how easy it is to use uh, certain um, technical calculations. And if you're not sure, uh, from here, from the edit indicator dialog, you have access to the dictionary. The dictionary that this button points to is the easy language dictionary. So this is like a quick reference to things that you can find in the dictionary and uh, that you can use here. For example, let's suppose that we wanna do a, uh, an exponential average of the closing prices. So I'm gonna go here to the dictionary Okay, notice how it opens up uh, just a dialog. It doesn't have to open up the full-blown development environment. You don't have to go to the full-blown dictionary. There's like a quick reference guide. And over here, let me put my glasses on to see what I, it says search for tick. There's a word in there already. Um, instead of searching, let me go here to category. And uh, under category, there is strategies to include and there's user functions. I'm gonna look at user functions because this is a quick list of all the functions that are part of the trade station platform. 
Now I can scroll down and try to find the one that I'm looking for. Um, average, we talked about average, but um, I did specify that the average that I wanted is exponential. Now, if you go to the easier, this is a list of, of over 400 different functions that you can use. If you go to the ease for exponential, I don't think it will be listed there as uh, exponential. You see, we have exits, extremes, factorial. So it's it's a, it's a it's a, I'm not gonna say it's a shame, but um, this is some of those things that you would have to know um, and memorize in order to find certain items. For example, exponential moving average is not under ease is under excess, because that's the way that the function was named when it was created. So if I scroll down, long list of functions here, and I have to choose the exponential, which is the very end of the alphabet. So let's go here to the excess. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. There we go. Now we have, let me pause my notifications here for a moment. Okay, so we have X average. And uh, we can see here that in the notes, it says it returns the exponential average of values over length bars. The nice, the nice thing about looking at this dictionary is that it gives you parameters. Sometimes it gives you an example. Here it tells me that I need price and length. And if you want additional information on this, I believe you can go here to definition. Yep, and it opens up directly into the functions documentation. And, and this is, I do this just to get uh, a, a, an example of how the function is used. Notice that the function name is X average, and I just use it to close, and the period inside parentheses. And that's all I need. Let me go ahead and cancel out of this. And if I wanted to do an exponential moving average, all I need to do here is X average, open up parentheses, not a comma, and I'm gonna make it a 20 bar exponential moving average. You can see how we have a line. So yeah, you, you're saying, well, you could have just inserted the exponential moving average, which is part of the list. Yes, you are absolutely correct. But knowing that you have these custom indicators available to you so that you can supply the formula you want, I think it's a great benefit because now uh, you can change uh, calculations on the fly without having to write up a separate code. Now, if you know that you're gonna be using this for good and that uh, you need something fixed and set in the list, then you probably need to go to the development environment and create your own code. But here it's not necessary if you just want a quick calculation. In fact, I could come here I can do anything to this. So instead of uh, using the close here, I can say, give me a, uh, an X average of uh, high plus low. We put that inside parentheses divided by two. Add an extra parenthesis. Let me see if that works. So now instead of using the closing price of the bar, it's using the midpoint. Let me let me just paste what I I know the font here is really small. What I'm uh, putting inside of the inputs is this right here. So I put it right there in the chat. So I'm taking the high plus the low, dividing that by two, gives you the midpoint of the bar, and I'm using that level as what is it that I want to calculate inside of the exponential average function. So it works very similar. And notice that I didn't have to open up code. I didn't have to worry about, you know, declaring inputs or variables. I just come in here, use a custom indicator, and I'm able to just modify the formula on the fly. One thing that I remembered this morning, because I was trying to think about, you know, what type of exercises or, or examples to provide you. Let me show you something really cool. Um, Trade Station doesn't have a historical database on options, 
spread pricing. So we do have historical data on individual options. So if you wanted to pull up a chart on a call or a chart on a put, you can definitely do that. But um, if you wanted to do a chart on a vertical spread, then that's, that's a little challenging. You don't have data for the spread itself, but we can try to simulate activity for a vertical spread by using the two symbols that make up the vertical in a multi-data chart. Let me show you exactly what I mean by that. I'm gonna, well, first of all, let me pull up Option Station Pro file, not file. Let's go to apps and go to um, Option Station Pro because it'll be easier for me to copy symbols from there. If I find, of course, Option Station Pro in here, let's see. Um, uh -huh, uh -huh. I know that I was using it yet yesterday. All right, this is, uh, this is uh, worrying me. Either I'm going a little bit blind or I don't see Option Station Pro listed here at the end. Right here, okay. That's cared for a little bit. Thank you, Rich. Thank you for that. I knew it was there, right? It's like one of those things like I've seen it here before and now it's not. So let's go here to my options. Uh, this is uh, Microsoft. Yeah, Microsoft is fine. Let's go here to one of these. Well, these are the ones that expire, you know, the third week of May, which is good. Let me open up uh, the spread here so that I don't have to deal with the decimal places. Excuse me. If I go silent for a moment, it's because I'm muting. I have this uh, terrible cough and cold. Uh, I feel okay. You know, so I'm good too for the class. It's just sometimes is, uh, I just have to <laughs> release. So let's go here. And uh, I said that I wanted to make the spread a little bit wider to remove some of the decimal places. And let's work with this 275 and 280. Let me go here and make them single. So the 275 and the 280. Yeah, that seems like it's good. The 275, I'm gonna right click and copy the symbol. And I'm gonna go back here to trade station to type it in here. So I'm gonna go here to type it inside the command line. And that is my chart on this call. So they have a lot of uh, activity as I expected it to but uh, it's fine. This is a daily chart. Let's go to a 60 minute time frame. Uh, it's very little. Let's go here to something that is um, active. It's more actively traded. So this is a 275. It has an open interest of 1,154 volume 800. Let's go here to SPY, which are one of the most uh, traded ETFs that there are, especially in the options world. So you can see the difference here, right? These are the monthly options. You can see the 422 and the 421. These are very, are actively traded. I'm gonna go with the, the 422 and the 420. All right, so let me right click, copy the symbol, go back to trade station and put it in here. All right, that wasn't so much different. <laughs> okay, and uh, hmm. unless you guys have, maybe it's because, let me go back in here. That's a monthly option. Let's go here to, these are the ones that are expiring this week. Uh-huh. Okay, so the weekly options have a lot of volume. Let's talk about these ones that are expiring at the end of the week. So the 423, let's right click, copy the symbol, chart.
keeping you trying to find an example that makes much more sense. Okay, let's suppose that we're using this, you know, option. This is the one that expires um, June 17th. So these are the June options, which is okay. Let's do the 275. I'll do the 280. Right click. Trade station. I'm going to go here to data, add symbol, and we're going to do this. So we have the two symbols on the screen. So if I were to do a two, this is the 275 and the 280. Let me go back here to the option chain and create a vertical, vertical spreads. So the spread width, it's already too far. So this is the 275 and 280. Uh, let's create a spread. Now, this is a debit spread. So we're buying the 275 and we're selling the 280. So in this, in this particular case, you know, this is a debit spread of 295. You can see the price right here. Uh, but it's what is happening in the background is just one is one is being subtracted from the other. Let's go back here to my, to my trade station. And you can see the current trading price over here on the far right. One thing to keep in mind is that what you see in Option Station Pro when it does the math for the pricing of this vertical spread is that it's taking the current bid and the current ask. Here in charting, we don't have historical bid and ask information. What we do see is historical trading information. So we have a record of all the trades that have occurred for these two options. So uh, when we do the math, we're going to be using trading information as opposed to bid and ask. So there might be a, a slight difference between one or the other. So what we're going to do, if we're going to be buying the 275 and we are going to be selling the 280, we have to subtract one from the other. So this is the 275 is going to be a negative, you know, and uh, our 280 is going to be a positive. If we're selling, that's a credit into our account. Well, let's do the difference between these two. I'm going to take that same one line and I'm going to say close data one minus close data two. Close data one. I just close that out too. Let me bring this over here to its own subgraph. Notice that I'm just clicking and dragging. Uh, what this is giving me is 262. Remember, the difference between this price and what we see in the Options Station Pro is all because of the difference between the bid and ask and the current trading prices. But if I go back here to my Options Station Pro, and uh, it's very close to the mid price. The mid price right here is 268, 265. Um, and you can see that reflected very close here to what the current trading price is. Does that make sense? So when we look at this line, it's giving us some somehow, you know, a mathematical formula of the bars that are here on the screen. With the exception of some bars where with, there's no value, you see? Uh, so that's why I wanted to get a bar or, or, or a chart that had a little bit more history. This is on a daily chart. Okay, daily chart works too. Um, but what we're really looking for is to see the highs and the lows of this as well. So one thing to one thing that I that I that I thought of was try to create our own synthetic candles so that we can see the bars right here on the chart. Um, and we do that by using a four line custom four line um, study. Let me show you exactly what I mean by that. Let me remove this one. And I'm gonna go here to studies, add studies, and this will be a custom four line. And I'm using a four line study because I, I wanna reference uh, the four price points of every bar. There's an open, high, low, and close. So if I take all the highs of the bars, I can create synthetic bars that have highs. Now, if I take all the lows, 
of the bars, then I have a, a data point for the lows of my synthetic bars. Once you see it on the chart, it'll make a little bit more sense. Let me go ahead and put that on. It goes right here at the bottom. Let me go ahead and customize this particular indicator because as you can see, there is a formula for each one of the lines. The very first one is going to be high minus the high. So high of data one minus the high of data two. Let's go ahead and copy that and paste it here. But now instead of using the high here, I'm going to use the low. High, low. You just have to remember which plot is which. And I probably should start with, uh, with the way that open high, low, closed bars are referenced so that I know which one is which. You know, if I start with the high, I may forget what I started off with. But I do know that open, high, low, close bars have that sequence, open, high, low, close. So I'm going to start here with the open data one and open data two. Open, high. And I'll copy these into the chat so you have them as well. And uh, over here, I'll make this open, high. This will be the low. And this would be the close. All right, so let me copy these again. So this is on plot number one. This is on plot number two. This is on plot number three. And this is on plot number four. All right, so you can see that each one of them is referenced a different data point, but at least you're not only reference what the price closed at, you're also referencing what the high of the bar is, what the low of the bar is, and what the opening of the bar is. Let's go to click OK. By the way, let me make the style thicker. You know, sometimes lines are kind of uh, thin, and I want you guys to be able to see them on the screen. All right, take a look at what's happening here on the chart. Uh, of course, it looks like spaghetti thrown at the chart because every line is calculating something different. One line is calculating the open, you know, the high and the low and the close. But I'm going to format the style of this chart. And um, plot one, I know that's the open. So I'm going to use that as the bar left tick. See that? Left tick. I'm gonna change the color in just a moment, but I wanna use the left tick for plot number one, which is the open. Plot two is the bar high. Plot three is the bar low. And plot four is the right tick of the bar, meaning that it's the closing of the bar. I'm gonna come here to the color because each one of these plots is gonna be a different color and it's gonna look like rainbow. If you wanna standardize the colors, we can use maybe I'm going to use this bright green. Okay, so make the bars green. If you like the multicolor open, high, low, close bar, that's fine too. And then I'll just click OK. Hmm. And uh, you can see that probably I may have uh, selected the values. Let's see. Let me see what happened here. I'm just looking at the ticks here. I'm just trying to figure out why some of these ticks are off. You know, there's no, seems like the painting was really off. Let's go here to the style of this study. Uh oh, did not want to open that. Let's go here back to trade station. Uh, let me see what's going on. Let me go to studies to, to, to make sure that I, uh, that I have enough space here to visualize what I'm working on, I'm gonna make these uh, symbols transparent. I'm gonna go to the scaling tab and make these option symbols hidden so that I just see the bars that I'm working on. So you can see that 
yeah, they, they look like bars, but some of the ticks are kind of off the screen. Let me see, like over here, I may have just selected something that I shouldn't have. So plot one is 161. Oh, because I'm plotting. Did I do the bad formula? Close of that at one, but there's a close of that at two. Because it may be just right. It's just maybe because of the formula. You know, I'm not, I'm not referencing the only data stream. So I'm just creating a difference between the two. And that's probably why well, the difference is all over the place. You know, sometimes one high may be much higher than the other high, but not so much the lows. So this is technically what we have. <laughs> uh, the closing values, which is really funny, right? So the closing values are right here, 251. I wanna do data and view data window. Yeah, I just uh, made them hide. But uh, let me go ahead and go to data, edit symbol. Let me customize this because I want to make I want to bring them back to my view. So I'm going to make symbol number one subgraph one, and symbol number two, I'll make it subgraph two. All right, that'll give me some data here to look at. So plot number one, you can see here is four thirty. Let's take a look at this one right here. So we have, because the bar here is not complete. I want to just check the opening. The opening is 1819, 1550, right? So let's do the math here. Let's do the math in our heads to see what's going on here. So I'm going to do 1819, which is the opening of one of the data points, and 1550. That gives us 269, which is plot number one, 269. But then we have the high, which is lower than the open, you see? That's why it creates this kind of a gap between the high and the open. Why is the, why is the high two, four, where's the high lower than the open? That's because it is looking at the high here of 1819, minus the high here of 1570, and it's giving you $2.49. So the math is correct. It's just the visual that I was expecting is not what I was expecting. So let me double click here and uh, go back to style. Now I wanted to hide these. It's going to be scaling, hidden. All right. And then this one right here, I'll just uh, do the same thing. Oh, come on. Let's hide it. So what I thought would happen is that I would see regular open, high, low, close bars in my head. It kind of worked, but in reality, the mathematical formula doesn't really lend itself to give you, you know, uh, regular open, high, low, close bars. However, if you have a technical study that requires that you would like to see in an open, high, low, close bar kind of style, um, you'd have to have four data points that are assigned to these uh, scaling properties. You can assign it to a left tick, a high, a low, and then a right tick to create you know, synthetic open, high, low, close bar. So I wanted to throw this example in. I know that I hadn't shown you uh, this type of styling, but um, if you can think of any, uh, especially you know, if you're creating your own index, and, I, and this is something that I've talked about before, where you have uh, open positions and you bring in and want to create an index out of your open positions, rather than just referencing the closing of the bar of each one of your open positions, you can reference you know, all the data points, open, high, low, close, and then create synthetic bars that represent your index. Similar to what you look at uh, uh, the S&P 500 index or the Dow Jones index, you know, they have open, high, low, close bars. So um, your own synthetic filter, I mean, your own synthetic index can also have that styling. 
Um, I wanted to take a look at, let me just leave this open just in case there's any follow-up questions. Um, I wanted to take a look at what custom note does here. So I'm gonna go here to studies, add studies, custom quote. Oh, that custom quote is just a, a way for you to bring in, this it says loading, let's go here to Microsoft. All right, so it's just, it's just a quick way for you to bring in a quote for a different symbol. Um, it's an interesting, interesting type of indicator because it doesn't plot anything. You can see how my subgraph is completely dark. All you see is an update here on the right-hand side because all it does is just bring the most recent quote of that particular uh, symbol. And the symbol, if you can see in the inputs right here is spy. So if I wanted to put that here on my chart, I could do that. If I go to data, and I go to edit symbol, no, not that one. I go to studies, I go to edit studies. Just be mindful that a custom quote will probably need a, its own scale. Because right now, my, my, the quote here for Spider is 421. If I try to put it here where my Microsoft quote is, Microsoft is trading at 275. So if you try to share those two scales, there's gonna be completely off because Spider is gonna be all the way here at the top, Microsoft at the bottom, there's gonna be an ugly gap in between the two. So if you're gonna have, if you're gonna be putting any quotes on top of the same symbol, just make sure to put them on the left-hand side. Let me customize this. I'm gonna go here to scaling. I'm gonna put on subgraph number one, but instead of the right axis, I'm going to say left axis. Left axis is not visible, but once you set something to the left axis, it'll display the left axis on the chart. I'm going to click OK and close. And here we go. So now on the right-hand side, I still see the price of Microsoft, 275. But over here on the left-hand side, I see the price of Spider, 421 and 13. If I wanted to change the symbol, let's say that I wanted to see the value of the VIX. Let me go here to data, edit symbol. The thing is that there's only one symbol on the chart, you know? So the data right here, I always, I've done it twice and I have to explain what I'm doing here. I try to, I'm trying to edit spider, but spider here is not a symbol that I added. It's just an indicator that's bringing in the data. So instead of um, editing the symbol, I have to go to studies and edit studies. And in here, I'm gonna go to the inputs because that's where you change the symbol. Right here, symbol to use, it says spy in there. I'm gonna do dollar sign VIX dot X. So now you see the VIX value right here on the left-hand side without having to have its own subgraph. This is just bringing in the data for you and plotting it right there on the chart. You also, in addition to having all these custom studies in the list of indicators, you also have them in my show me. There's a custom, custom show me. If you click okay, I have mine to prompt me for, you know, for editing, for customizing before it goes on the chart. If you don't have that check mark checked, every time you add a study, it'll put it on the chart without even asking you to change it. Um, I have mine to ask me all the time, just in case I want to make some modifications before it goes on the screen. The criteria here, high, less than the high one bar ago, and the low greater than the low one bar ago. So this is looking for an inside bar. If I use it the way it is, these are the little candles that is marking for me. It's an inside candle. So the high, lower than the previous high, and the low, higher than the previous low. So I have one here, I have one here too, and I have one here. You see how the candle is small in relationship to the previous candle. I wonder what this line is. That's interesting. Not sure what that line is. Mm -hmm. 
Is that something that I drew? It doesn't seem to be something that I drew, but um, okay. It seems like that's probably, you know, my spider data that's coming through. Maybe, and this is just a maybe, as the bar builds based on this time frame, I'll see some historical data being plotted on the chart. That's just a maybe. But the, the magenta dots that I'm seeing right here, those are the inside bars. Again, you can modify that to any formula that you want to. For example, um, if I want to say volume greater than the average volume for the past 30 bars. Let me copy that. I'll put it right here into the chat so you know exactly what I typed in. So whenever you have a candle whose or that the volume is higher than its average, it's going to be marked with a magenta dot. Of course, that's not a very restrictive filter because most of the time, all the bars at the beginning of the day and most of the bars at the end of the day are usually you know, greater than the average. But if you, let me go back in there and say, well, I want to greater than the average Uh, volume needs to be greater than the average. Okay, so you can use a multiplication factor here and say times 1.5. Volume needs to be greater than volume average times 1.5. If I click OK, then again, some of those magenta dots are going to be removed. The nice thing about using a show me is that you're not using real estate instead of your chart analysis window. So I don't necessarily have to keep a volume study at the bottom of the chart. I can use sort of a show me that tells me which of the candles are meeting the criteria that I'm looking for. In this case, um, uh, more than you know, volume that exceeds the average by a certain percentage. We also have a custom paint bar. Here we go, custom paint bar. And if I want to use uh, some paint, just to give me the criteria, let's say that I want to paint the time uh, greater than 11 and time less than 1300. So what we're looking for is the noon hours. So from 11 a.m. all the way to 1 p.m. But expressed in easy language time form. Let me go ahead and copy this and put it right here so you can see exactly what I'm typing in. Time greater than 1100 and time less than 1300. And I'm going to paint those a color white. And here we go. So any, any, any bar or any candle that meets the criteria will be painted white. You can see that the bars that happen between 11 and 1 p.m. are the ones that are painted white for any reason. If you want to maybe uh, take a lunch break <laughs> and then let, uh, you know, the markets are kind of slow when it comes to volume during the noon time, uh, you can, you know, enhance the visual of your chart analysis so you know exactly when these times are presented on the screen. And that's about it, you know, um, I don't think we have, we don't have a custom activity bar or a custom probability map. We only have those custom indicators or custom studies inside indicators, show me's and paint bar, but specifically designed for you to supply a formula and your own filter. In fact, here in Radar, this is something that we've uh, talked about before. If you go to Radar screen, We have a couple of custom columns that you can add. You can have a custom quote or a custom note. I think those are the two that are here. Oh, we have the same custom one, two, three, four lines that we have in charting. Okay, so you can make those your own, you know, calculations. Let me let me do the three line and give you an example. Of course, I mean if you're gonna have a column like this that has plot one, plot two, and plot three. The labels don't really help you, you know, uh, 
they'll really help you to know exactly what they are. And if you're going to be using that for good or for something that you want to use going forward, I always recommend you write your own indicator. And then let me go here to add the DAO 30. And uh, one thing that we've talked about when it comes to, you know, uh, calculated values is that you can put in, you know, any value in there. Let me go here to studies and edit this. And in the inputs, I can specify my formulas. So I can say, well, I want my value one to be the RSI. No, and I see the RSI value right here in column number one. If I want to, then maybe I want my value two to be, uh, let's see, the average of the close over 100. So now we see the moving average over 100 bars. And you can see if the last trader price is above or below that moving average. And number three, you know, you can maybe do an ATR and say AVG true range for the past 30 days. And it gives you that calculation. Of course, this is uh, based on this interval. So I can change those to daily. So you can make, you know, those calculated values, anything you want. But again, I would... I would not suggest you do it with this custom three line if it's something you wanna see all the time because uh, these are the labels, plot one, plot two, and plot three, which are not very descriptive. But these allow you to just plot any calculated value that you're looking for. And then I can sort by these values and see, you know, this one has the highest ATR, United Healthcare with $11.17. Um, in addition to the custom one lines, let's go ahead and take a look. I think uh, we've used custom note. Yeah, custom quote, similar to the one in charting. This is the way for you to bring in the price of any symbol inside of radar screen. And then custom note is just for you to add a note. So I can double click on United Healthcare, go here into the inputs and type in a note. I just type in, this is the highest ATR. So if you want to have, you know, custom notes inside a column like this, use the custom note indicator. Just uh, keep in mind that if you're using this custom note indicator, when you customize it and you go to the inputs, whatever you want to show up here inside the cell needs to be put inside the quotation mark. That's the way that this works, All right? All right, guys, this is a little bit of review of things that we've talked about in the past. I want to thank you for your time. I appreciate you guys coming back. And um, um, I, I wish you guys a great afternoon. I apologize for my voice, but it's kind of dying on me. I want to, uh, hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll feel better tomorrow. Okay, have a great afternoon. Great having you today. Thank you so much.